Welcome to the Roundhouse Report. This is Jody Roundhouse coming at you real quick. Potential flash war. Again, you know I like to use that word flash. Sometimes it has to be done. Venezuela. I have to date this. It's the 17th of April. It's about to be the 18th. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. What is going on in Venezuela? Okay, for the past two months, the Russians have had military aircraft parked inside of Venezuela. The Russians have admitted to having at least 400 troops inside of Venezuela. That's publicly declared. Who knows how many Russian mercenaries that Putin may have hired. Uh, the Iranians have had deep-seated ties in Venezuela for at least two to three decades. Hezbollah. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization that's based in Lebanon. They fight Israel. They've been fighting in the Syrian civil war. Iran created, trained, finances, and equips Hezbollah. It's an offshoot of Iran. It's run by their uh, Quds force, Q-U-D-S force. That's the branch of their military that's in charge for foreign operations. So Hezbollah was made, and one of the first things they did was the Beirut bombings, where they killed over 200 Marines, United States Marines, in the Be Be Beirut bombings. But I'm getting off track. About a decade, about two decades ago, just after 2000 or so, Chavez, then president of Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, and Iran began building and kind of modernizing a western hemisphere version of hezbollah and apparently it's called the bolivarian army because maduro there was an election in venezuela maduro was the president he ran he's saying he won the person he won against is named juan guaido he's saying he won all right so it looks like the election was rigged under Maduro, you have seen what has happened to Venezuela vis-a-vis -vis the socialist policies leading to the civil unrest that's been going on for almost a year now. Uh, so the United States and most of the free world, aka most of the pro-US countries, our allies, support Juan Guaido. Russia, Iran, the, uh, the, the, the anti-American axis that's forming, globally as well as in the western hemisphere right in our back door in venezuela they support maduro so there's this like proxy war that looks like it may start it's like a throwback to the cold war where you got the soviets over here in the western hemisphere causing problems and we're having to overthrow communist governments so at this time it's a socialist government right maduro socialism so the about three weeks ago the united states congress floated the idea what if we sent five thousand oh by the way during this time period uh with the russians having warships there or i'm sorry warplanes there uh bringing in supplies having troops there the iranians having hezbollah there iranian commanders are on the ground i'm sure that's my speculation because the media is not going to report on that uh, so you have uh, Iranian guys, and if you look just at the government of Maduro, you'll see a lot of Iranian names, Persian, Arab names. You'll see Russian names like Vladimir. So there are some heavy, heavy connections. And this has been happening for over two decades in Venezuela, this anti-American axis. And no one has given it much attention, especially the media. So before I go any further, I want to show you what's been happening to my hands. Can you see the destruction of my hands? I don't think you can. Anyhow, they're devastated. And I may have to see a doctor. I mean, I'm antibiotics right now. Well, I hopped up on antibiotics. All right. Okay. What, what I want you to do real quick, because this whole time, the last month at least, the United States has been sending under Trump's direct orders, these giant military cargo planes. Repeat, giant military sized cargo planes they have been landing inside of colombia which is just right next door to venezuela 
and they have been unloading aid. I don't know how many bullets and bullet chains and, you know, machine guns and mortars and everything that that aid consists of. But if you could pull up a map on Google really quick, as I speak, Google Maps, uh, a map of South America. You don't know what Google is, all right? Then we will try an experiment where I will use this map here. All right, here's Venezuela. Here's the troubled region. This is where the Russians are. And by the way, the Iranians are sending a five vessel naval flotilla to sit off the waters of Venezuela for at least five months. And they intend to do that rotationally. Every five months, they intend to send small fleets across the Atlantic, Iran, to sit in our backyard. All right. So you have Venezuela here, and then you have Colombia here. You have Colombia here. Now, we have floated the idea, the United States Congress, not simply Trump, but Congress, of sending 5,000 troops, United States troops, to sit here right on the border with Venezuela, right on the border. Because we see what's popping off. And if you look at American history and South America and Central America, all the coups that we have instigated, the CIA, uh, the Special Activities Division, et cetera, it makes sense you know, that we would want to nip this in the bud and we need to nip it in the bud otherwise this has the potential to get out of control quickly because if the military here in venezuela under maduro if it fragments into two section into two factions one that's pro maduro and one that's pro juan guaido who's the pro-trump guy proxy war you got a civil war now going on inside of venezuela now the latest news reports, the latest news reports are talking about, I'm trying to look at this map in a really, really weird way. Freaking Brazil, right? Brazil. Okay, they just voted, a, you know, a populist leader. He's kind of like Trump. He straight up said right out the gate, yo, we invite the United States to open up a major military installation right here, right inside of our, of our crap. All right, so now the recent news sources say that Brazil, Colombia, and the United States have formed an alliance to invade Venezuela before things get out of hand. That's the latest news update. Brazil, the strongest nation in South America, and Colombia, which they have a bunch of like coked up jungle fighters have agreed with the United States to potentially invade and overthrow Maduro's government in Venezuela. But, but the Russians have troops there. They have a tripwire force there. If we kill Russian troops, that is going to rally support inside of Russia against the United States. Although Russia sucked. And they have a hard enough time staying alive on a day-to-day -day basis. So I really don't think that that'll be much of an issue. <clears throat> but we need to nip this in the bud before it gets out of control. Because once a proxy war begins, it's going to be nasty. And if uh, Russia is, is no powerhouse, this, quote, resurgent Russia that people talk about, whatever money that their gas-based, their petrol-based economy brings in, it's all riddled with sanctions and everything from all the crap that they've been doing under Putin. Their economy sucks. So them sending, you know, six or seven fighter bombers, some cargo heavy airlift planes, 400 troops. You know, it looks tough, but it's whatever me meager amount of money the Russian economy does bring in, Putin puts into the military. You know, the population suffers as a result, which is why half of Russia, now a lot of people don't know this, in half of Russia, they use human hair, children's hair, real fluffy, uh, like uh, angel hair kind of hair. In Eastern Russia, they use that for freaking currency. Let me repeat that. In Eastern Russia, in the year 2019, they use children's hair for currency. All right, this is the Roundhouse Report. Please subscribe.